Let's go on ahead and uh, do a little demo here. This is going to be uh, soldering some wires together and uh, I'll kind of show you. Um, you can do it a couple different ways. What we're going to do, we're actually going to do this uh, with some heat shrink. So we'll do uh, solder and then the heat shrink after. Um, of course, we're on a bench here, so the wires are not on the car; they are loose. Uh, whenever you're on the, you know, whenever you're working on a car, you're going to want to be able to sure that you uh, put your heat shrink on first, and then solder it. Uh, you'll probably only make that mistake a couple times before you have to cut it open or just tape it up. So what you would do, uh, you basically got your two ends you've stripped. You can um, you can strip these back, you know, half an inch. I usually try to go about three quarters of an inch. These are just a little short, but uh, I'll show you here. We can still make it work, and then I'll do one a little longer. But uh, we'll take these wires. I usually you want to keep your ends just inside of the sheathing. You don't want it going past the sheathing. The way we're going to do this repair, um, and at the end it'll keep it all flat. So I'll show you all that. So what we're going to do, twist them together, and you can kind of pull and adjust as you go. So I kind of just twist both sides, spin them around. And uh, what you want, again, is just the wires to end just inside. So this one is not bad. It's really short. Some people like to do repairs kind of shorter like that. And I'm gonna, we'll solder in just a second. Let me show you here. I'm going to strip one a little bit further back. And what it does gives you a little more real estate to work with. It holds on to the wires a little bit better. So this is probably closer to an inch. And uh, same deal wires are going to end just inside the sheathing so we'll twist it and again if you are a little bit further out you can kind of pull it to get it into position so I'll kind of pull that where I want it and then we can kind of twist it a little bit more and so that one just kind of holds a little tighter and I'll actually show you this one kind of will come apart pretty pretty simple that one already starts to come apart this one takes a little bit more work that's just more more of the wires grabbing onto uh, onto each other there all right, so we'll go ahead. Let's assume you already put your heat shrink on. We can do that afterwards again for what we're doing here. Um, let me grab the soldering iron. You can use a torch, you can use a soldering iron. Uh, the biggest thing is just to use the better solder. We use a 60-40 tin lead solder, and we do offer that on the website. Um, we sell it with the heat shrink already ready to go. And uh, let's see here. So one of the things that are the big keys is I'll start to get the iron hot. And I'll, as soon as you can kind of see the smoke, you'll know it's warm. And I kind of tap my solder onto the iron, come up under the wire. Now, I'm not going to sit on it very long. I'm going to actually melt the solder right onto the iron going towards the wire. So what some people will do is they hold the iron on the wire till it gets hot enough to melt the solder, but that can kind of take a while. So if you do it just like that, melt it right into your wire. We'll do it again on this other one. So again, I'm not going to leave it on there very long. I'm just going to go right into melting the solder right into the wire. I can, it's obviously kind of cockeyed here, but it doesn't matter. It transfers through the way you do it whenever you melt up. As soon as you start melting that solder into it, it moves right through. And I'm going to show you all here. What you want is you want a good even, and I'm going to actually kind of clean this up a little bit, but you want a good even fill with your solder. And again, when this is on the car being held in position, it's a little easier. But let me just make sure that I get it all the way around on this one and what you you don't want is you don't want not enough solder you don't want too much solder without getting it hot enough so you can end up with a cold solder joint with this uh, what you'll see is you're going to see the solder it's silver it's not a super bright silver it's just kind of be more dull you'll see the shape of the wire in there but you're not going to really see that much of the wire uh, it should all be that silver color same thing with this one so, and you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's a little bit of copper wire there. So that's not bad. Again, I, you can kind of stay a little bit longer on it and fill it, or you can always come back. It's a little different doing it on a bench here than when it's on a car. When it's on the car, I kind of pull on the wire some, and I'm able to kind of transfer that heat quicker. And we'll just melt that in there. So what happens is if you don't get the iron hot enough and you start melting solder on your wire, you will end up seeing a bunch of solder built up onto the wire. It won't be melted in and you'll end up with a cold solder joint. So that's where a good iron or a good torch and just taking your time with it. Um, so now once that's done, again, say you've already got your heat shrink on there and you don't want it too close to where you're repairing it because of course that's, it gets hot and it would start melting that heat shrink. So you kind of want it a good few inches away. Once that repair is done, you're going to pull your, your heat shrink up. Now this is the, kind of a part to get used to. I usually hold my finger at a certain point 
where I know that is a good stopping point because you don't want to go too far one way and have it right at the edge. So, okay, I know that this is a two inch piece of uh, heat shrink. Hold my finger right there, it's about, because you're about two inches there, so I stop, bring the heat shrink down. I know it's a good stopping point, grab it. From here, I'm gonna use a torch. I like a, a heat gun, but I'm not using one today, so I'll show you. The only thing you gotta be careful with with a torch is uh, you don't wanna get it too hot and um, burn the uh, heat shrink. So you kinda wanna stay back a little ways. I kind of start it. This heat shrink does have glue in it, which helps to kind of seal it up, make it weather tight. Kind of go a little bit, let it get going, and then kind of slowly spin it. This heat shrink is also, uh, like I said, we do sell it, and um, you'll see that it shrinks down quite a bit from its original size. And then the biggest thing is to make sure that that glue is coming out of the ends. That means that it's uh, heated up correctly, it's shrunk down, and now it'll. Uh, set cool down and that'll be a you know weather tight sealed connection for your your uh, repair there and i'll show you one more time this is on the shorter one what you can do actually what some people will do is take this heat shrink and cut it down because this is a shorter repair and so actually i'll show you with that so we can cut this down to whatever you want you could hold it near your repair i always like to go at least half an inch past where that wire ends and also, if you're doing a bunch of uh, wire repair in one area, I always recommend try to stagger your, uh, your cuts if you can, because you don't want a bunch of heat shrink all in one area, a bunch of splices. It gets kind of a big bulky uh, mess. So if you stagger your cuts, the heat shrink kind of spreads out a little bit more and it won't be such a big bulky area there, especially once you try to wrap it with uh, flex loom. So I'll show you again, kind of hold it. Try not to burn myself here. Get going with it, and uh, again, like I said, I like using the heat gun, but torch works well also. Just kind of stay back away from it, make sure you don't burn it. And uh, just kind of roll around. If on the car, you can obviously kind of move the iron around it also. Um, again, just kind of be aware of everything in your surroundings so you don't, don't burn something that you don't want to. And uh, there you go, you'll have the, uh, the glue come out the ends. Obviously, I don't really want to touch it, but I'm just kind of showing you there. So that seals everything up. And uh, just a little bit shorter on that repair. But that's kind of basic. Um, what we can do here, you can, it doesn't matter if you have different size wires. A lot of our connectors that we sell are going to be maybe one gauge size up from what is on the car. We try to be at least the same size or bigger. We don't want to be smaller. Um, just uh, obviously you can kind of build up a bit of heat with that resistance at your connection point uh, or if it's say a headlight connector um, those build up so much heat anyways I like to try to get as big a wire as possible for those so what we can do actually what we'll do the 16 gauge down to a 20 gauge uh, it doesn't matter again you can do any kind of repair so I'm gonna go back an inch on our wire here both of them especially since we're doing a bigger wire onto a thinner wire I can get this one stripped. These strippers are a little old here. We use them a lot. All right, so this one, again, 20 gauge down to 16 gauge. Same principle, kind of spin them. I like to, to rotate back and forth, so I spin one and I spin the other. Now, our 16 gauge is a little bit past the heat, the sheathing, so I'm gonna kind of pull it just a little bit. And then right there, and I kind of straighten them out. I don't like it to be kind of bent. Because, of course, once you solder it, it's going to make that a, a hard point of repair. So if it's got a bend in it, that's what it's going to stay as. So kind of keep it flat. And then same principle. Bring our iron in, get it hot for a second. And then I can already see the smoke starting to come off. You might not be able to see that on film. But uh, immediately, I'll start melting my solder right into the wire. And then I just kind of move down. I'll stay on it. I'll stay on it for a second longer this time. Make sure that it gets uh, all the way around. And this one actually looks a little bit better. You'll see a little bit more silver on the solder. Let it cool down for a second. And so that one's a little bit more filled in. And again, you can always come back around and, and get it again. It just uh, kind of depends each time you do it. I'm using the solder here. I'm using is a, this one's I think a point, it's a 0.8 millimeter, uh, point or one millimeter is a little bit better. 
uh, for this kind of stuff. It, it puts a little bit more in to the repair pretty quickly and we'll do that here in just a second and show you. And uh, let me, we'll do the uh, heat shrink again and um, I'm gonna do another repair here and I'll show you with the uh, one millimeter solder what that looks like. Again, you've already got the heat shrink on your repair. Typically is how you wanna do it. And we'll just bring it down. Got my hand at a stopping point. That's where I wanna stop it. kind of heat one end, that'll kind of get that glue going, it'll grab itself, hold it in position. Again, not getting too close. Kind of spin that. We got a fan going, so it's kind of pushing the flame around a little bit. And that is it, right there. So again, if that was bent, whenever you do that, it's gonna kind of hold that bend. So you just gotta kind of keep it as straight as possible. Let's do one more here. This is with 18 gauge to 18 gauge. We'll go back to that smaller repair and we'll do the one, one millimeter solder on this one. Actually, let me strip these a little further. We'll come in here and this, like I said, we're gonna use the uh, 1.0, the one millimeter solder here for this one. So you'll see it actually kind of fills in a little bit faster. It's what I prefer to use um, when I'm doing a repair like this. If it's a really tiny wire, then that 0.8 works real well. Uh, so again, run the iron for a second, let it get hot. We should be good. Yep, it's melting now. All right, bring it up under it. Melt right into the iron, and then it just transfers right down the wire. And this one should be filled in a lot better uh, again, because it's 1.0 and that did fill a lot quicker. So again, that's about the biggest I go uh, for repairs like this is the 1.0, it's what I prefer. That's what we uh, sell. The 0.8 is good for uh, a little bit smaller stuff, uh, especially if you're doing some kind of circuit board repair or really small wire. Uh, but for the 16 gauge, 18 gauge, uh, even up to eight gauge, I use that 1.0. And uh, that's basically it for that.